This is Katherine Neal, and today we're going to be looking at a decision-making framework. This is a tool that you can use in a simple ethical dilemma or problem-solving scenario, or you can use it in a very complex business or technical scenario. There are many decision-making frameworks, and you can look for them um, online or in uh, many people have written books about decision-making frameworks. And the one we're going to use is um, quite similar to most of them. I find this one to be practical, easy to use, and applicable to a variety of types of situations. So. Um, Let's walk through the steps. I want you to commit these steps to memory and start practicing applying this framework in your day-to-day -day life. Before we get into the steps of the decision-making framework, I want you to first take a step back when you have a problem, when you're addressing an ethical dilemma, and Identify the issue or issues presented. How do you know you may have a problem? How do you know you're, you're going to have to address an ethical dilemma? What about it makes you feel uncomfortable? What can you see from an overall perspective that leads you to believe you need to solve a problem? So the first step, make sure you have a grasp of all the facts available. Now, if we're talking about applying this framework to a case study in a business textbook or from some other source, the facts will be given to you. So it's quite easy to identify and grasp the facts available. In real life, it's not as easy. You really have to take a look at the situation, analyze what you know for certain without making any assumptions. Step two. List any information you would like to have but do not. And make a list of information that does not exist. Think about the things that would be helpful to know in order to resolve the problem. But you don't know. You don't have access to that information or it doesn't exist. Also acknowledge any assumptions you'd have to make in resolving the dilemma. Step three. Identify each person and or group involved in the dilemma and list the concerns they face or might have. Who's going to be impacted by your decision and how are they going to be impacted? You can think about individuals, business organizations, other types of organizations, any group or person who might be impacted by the situation. Often it's easy to identify those who are going to be directly impacted. But I want you to think more broadly than just the obvious groups and individuals. Think about all of the people or groups or organizations who would be indirectly impacted. This can expand the list significantly. Step four, develop a list of possible resolutions for the problem. This is a brainstorming step. Think of all the possible resolutions for the problem. And you can prompt your thinking by applying various models or theories. This can help you um, develop this list. For example, you can think about Warren Buffett's front page of the newspaper test. What's the possible resolution if you would feel comfortable with your decision appearing on the front page of the newspaper, if everybody's going to know what you decided and why. That can be a possible resolution to the problem. You can think about the golden rule. You can think about utilitarian theory. What would a utilitarian do in this situation? Uh, what possible resolution would provide the greatest good for the greatest number of people? So try to be comprehensive here, be creative, come up with a, uh, a full list of possible resolutions to your problem. Don't evaluate them during this step. Just be open-minded and come up with a comprehensive list. 
Step five, evaluate each resolution on your list for cost, legalities, and impact. For each resolution, think about if it's feasible, will it be effective to solve your problem? Do you have any legal issues you must consider? Is it the right thing to do? Do you, will you end with an ethical result? And how will it impact those impacted? Step six, the final step in this decision-making model is make a recommendation on the action that should be taken. So you've evaluated all your possible resolutions and now you're going to make a recommendation. This is how I think this problem should be solved. This is how I think this ethical dilemma should be addressed. So let's apply the decision-making framework to a simple ethical dilemma. You and your friend purchase tickets to see a movie at the theater near your home. After seeing the movie, you realize as you're walking down the multiplex hallway that there are no theater employees around. You could easily slip into another movie that is just starting and see it without purchasing another ticket. Your friend says, why not? No one will know. Besides, it doesn't hurt anyone. Look at the price of tickets. They're making plenty of money. Should you take in the movie for free? So before we begin, let's take an overall look at this scenario and ask ourselves, do we see any issues? Is, what is the core issue here? Why do we feel like there might be a problem? And here you might be asking yourself, is it okay to slip into the movie without buying a ticket? What's the core problem there? Perhaps it's taking something that doesn't belong to you, even though it's something intangible. It's not like you're going to Target and shoplifting a DVD of the movie, but it is still property. It's intellectual property that you don't have the right to view. So the core problem in this scenario is taking something that doesn't belong to you. First step, make sure you have a grasp of all the facts available. Here in this case, the facts are given. You're at the movie theater, there are no employees around, you can slip into another movie that's about to start, should you do it. Step two, list any other information we'd like to have that would help us know what we should do in this scenario. Um, things like, if we don't pay for a ticket, who's not getting paid? Where does the revenue from ticket sales go? Does it go to the theater itself? Does it go to the production company of the movie? Does it go to the actors in the movie? Who's not getting their money if we don't buy a ticket for the movie? Other pieces of information that we don't have are, is the theater full? Are there assigned seats? Would we be taking someone else's seat? Uh, other information we don't know is uh, why are there no movie theater employees around? Why would it be so easy for us to slip in? Maybe they don't care if we're still there. Maybe in fact they would like us to stick around longer because we can buy extra concessions, expensive popcorn and soda and candy, and so they don't police the doors to the theaters because they would like us to stay longer and buy um, food and beverages. So those are the types of questions you ask during this step. Any information that would be helpful to know who we're hurting, who's not getting their money, uh, what are the possible consequences, what if we get caught sneaking into the second movie, what are our possible consequences. Step three, identify each person or group involved in the dilemma. And some of these considerations came up in the last step. Who's being hurt by our failure to buy a ticket? Who's not getting paid? Who would be impacted if we got caught, got in trouble? Would this be escalated to a legal problem? Would that impact my job, my family? So you can think of an expansive list of the people who would be impacted by any decision you make in this case. 
Step four, develop a list of possible resolutions for the problem. Well, in this case, there aren't that many possible resolutions. We can either sneak into the movie, we can not sneak into the movie, and we could buy a ticket for the movie. So those are the types of possible resolutions here. If we look at those, we think, okay, um, front page of the newspaper test, for example. How would I feel if I sneak into the movie, get caught, and that story ends up on the front page of a newspaper? Am I okay with that? Would I feel okay with my decision to sneak in? Or does that make me think that that's not uh, a helpful way to resolve this problem? Uh, the Blanchard and Peel test. Is it legal for me to sneak in? Well, technically it is not. Is it balanced? Is it okay? Am I hurting anyone? Is it fair of me to sneak into a movie? And then the third question, how does it make me feel? Do I feel okay sneaking into a movie? Do I feel bad? Would I even enjoy the movie because I know I'm not supposed to be there and that I didn't buy a ticket? So you can see how these uh, different models and theories might help you expand your list of possible resolutions. Step five. Let's evaluate each possible resolution for cost, legalities, and impact. Okay, our first resolution was we're going to sneak into the movie. What does that cost us? Well, we save the price of admission, we are violating the law, and we might be impacting a variety of people who don't get the revenue from us purchasing a ticket and the right to view and enjoy the movie. If we decide not to sneak in, we won't have violated anyone's rights, we wouldn't have breaking the law, and we would save the money on the ticket price because we're not going. And then the third possible resolution is that we buy a ticket for the movie. Well, we're out the cost of the ticket, so it does have some cost associated with it. It's legal of us to buy a ticket, and the impact is we get to see and enjoy the movie. Everyone who's supposed to uh, receive revenue from the price of the ticket gets their cut of the money. Um, so those are the evaluations of all of the resolutions that we listed. And finally, make a re recommendation on the action that should be taken. Well, in this case, based on our evaluation, I would recommend that we either don't sneak into the movie and just leave and we don't see that movie or we buy a ticket for the movie if we feel like the cost is uh, is worth the enjoyment that we'll get from the movie. That's how this decision making model works in application and that's a very simple scenario but it works equally well for very complex um, scenarios as well. So commit it to memory, start practice using it in your day-to-day -day life and see how it works for you.